Hi friends of cocktails, welcome to a special segment of cocktail time, I call cocktail engineering. Last time we talked about sugar and some basic syrups, and sweetness is needed to balance almost every cocktail, in one way or another. So it's an important subject. Today we'll tackle two more syrups that bring more to the table than just sweetness, gum syrup and ginger syrup. First, I need something to drink, and to switch things up, I won't make a cocktail. When you mix up ginger syrup, some soda water and a little lemon juice, you're making your very own ginger ale, not to be confused with ginger beer, which is fermented, but this is a simple, refreshing drink. But we'll start with gum syrup, since it's more like the syrups we made in the previous episode. And for that we need gum arabic, also known as acacia gum. This is a natural gum made of hardened sap from two species of acacia tree, harvested from wild trees in the Sahil region of Africa. But we are of course using the powdered version, and this, mixed into rich syrup, will give any cocktail a silky texture and a wonderful mouthfeel. Gum arabic has been used for centuries, for ink production, printing, photography, cosmetics and so on. But its main use is in the food and soft drink industry as the stabilizer, emulsifier or thickening agent. And it's been a key ingredient of early classic cocktails, since gum syrup lasted longer than regular simple syrup. Jerry Thomas, known as the professor, published the first American cocktail book in 1862, The Bartender's Guide, alternatively titled How to Mix Drinks or The Bon Vivant's Companion. On page 199 there's a recipe for gum syrup. I'm not sure for how many cocktails this recipe is meant for, with gallons and pounds, so let's use a modern recipe. So get your kitchen scale ready and let's make it. Along with water, sugar and gum arabic, this syrup also needs time. That's because gum arabic needs water to hydrate and it takes some time for it to fully incorporate. We'll add 50 grams of hot water to 45 grams of gum arabic. Stir it well so that there's no dry spots left. Cover and let it sit for at least a couple of hours. I like to leave mine for around 24 hours, which gives it plenty of time to fully hydrate and dissolve. We actually shot this in two days, which explains the wardrobe change. Next step is to add it to our rich syrup. This time I'll mix 360 grams of organic refined cane sugar with 130 grams of water, since we already added some water to the gum arabic. Because there's so much more sugar than water, using a blender helps it dissolve faster. To this we'll add the gum arabic paste that has formed, scrape it all out and add it to the syrup. With the measurements we used we got 360 grams of sugar and 180 grams of water with the addition of gum arabic. To use the gum syrup straight away, you're better off stirring it in. If you blend it like I did to incorporate everything thoroughly, it will turn out a bit milky. But it will settle eventually and look like this. Gum syrup should last in the fridge for at least 6 months, but you'll use it way before that. Old fashioned, pisco sour, friend 75. This makes them even better, and regardless of what some blogs out there think. I'm looking at you, serious hits. I used it for the Vajur sidecar. Not only will it give the cocktail a silky texture, 
but it also makes for some nice slow motion shots because of its high viscosity. It really binds all of the ingredients, and that amazing mouthfeel is for the extra time it takes to make. But what if you want that extra kick in your cocktail? Then ginger syrup is the way to go. This is a key ingredient in a penicillin, but it can spice up your favorite cocktail by using it instead of simple syrup. Most of the recipes simply tell you to cut up the ginger and cook it to get the extraction of the ginger taste, while well, boils and cools in the simple syrup. But I think you get more of that ginger kick with juicing it and make it into a ginger syrup. Just like we did for the Halloween episode, we'll start by peeling the ginger with a spoon. Trust me, there's no better way. Juice the ginger and strain it to a cheesecloth. If you don't have a juicer, you can blend the ginger with water in a blender, strain it thoroughly, then mix this ginger water with equal weight of sugar. For our ginger syrup we need 40 ml of ginger juice, but you can easily scale up the recipe if your ginger yields more. We'll make a 1 to 1 ginger syrup, where the liquid part will be made up of 1 part ginger to 2 parts water. That means that we poured 80 ml of boiling water into 120 grams of sugar. After that dissolves, add the ginger juice and mix well to combine. Take this recipe and adjust it to your liking. If you want more kick from the ginger, add more ginger and less water. And vice versa, of course. Store it in the fridge as well and use it within 3 weeks. Shouldn't be too hard, right? That's 8 syrups explained in 2 episodes. Well, 9 if you count triple syrup, and we already did the raspberry syrup in the Clover Club episode. I have 2 more in store, grenadine and orger, so let me know if you want to see how I make them. And please give me some feedback on cocktail engineering. Next week we are back to cocktails with a trip to Scotland to celebrate their national hero. Until then, keep learning and keep making cocktails. I hope I explained everything about gum and ginger syrup. Should we make gum ginger syrup? You know how I felt yesterday before uh, when I heard uh, Robert take 49? Yeah, let's go. <laughs> I was I like, really what the, the fuck? 49. Uh, this is the end of the video. If you want to see more cocktail recipes and more bloopers, check this out. And think about subscribing. Thanks for watching.